There's quite a few elements and status effects in God of War Ragnarok, and it can be a little confusing how you're supposed to use them. So let's break down each one and give you some tips to take your gameplay to the next level. We'll cover the basic ones like Frost, Burn, and Stun, but we'll also dive into Hex, Sonic, Poison, and more. There won't be any story spoilers here as long as you've played through your first visit to Vanaheim for The Reckoning, except towards the end of the video, but I'll give you another warning later. First, let's go over how status effects are triggered. Frost, Burn, Sonic, Hex, Poison, and Shock all need to be built up with repeated hits that deal the corresponding type of damage. So, for example, to build up the Frost state, you need to hit an enemy multiple times with attacks that deal Frost damage. The first hit will cause a Frost icon to appear above the enemy's health bar, and successive hits will fill this icon up until the Frosted state is triggered. Once the icon is completely filled, a timer ring will appear around the edge to show you how long the status effect will last. The number of hits you need to fill the icon is heavily dependent on your runic level. In the case of Frost and Fire, it also depends on how resistant or susceptible an enemy is to those particular elements. Other factors like the level of your runic attacks and which accessories you have equipped also influence status buildup rates. Stun works in a similar way to elemental statuses, but there's a dedicated stun bar directly under an enemy's health bar. Fill up this stun meter to trigger a stun. Okay, now that we know how to build up and trigger statuses, let's take a look at what each of them do, starting with Frost. Frost damage is dealt with the Leviathan Axe, and the Frost state has one effect. It slows an enemy's movement. The slowdown lasts for 10 seconds, and while it's a decent perk, I find it doesn't really slow them down enough to give you a big advantage, especially when fighting groups of enemies where it's difficult to frost them all at once. So instead of trying to leverage the slowdown effect, I recommend focusing on using Frost in other ways. The Vaporized Frost skill will allow you to deal increased damage by using blade melee attacks on frosted enemies. From my testing, the damage boost is somewhere between 80 to 150. 50%, depending on the enemy's level of resistance or weakness to fire, since you're dealing damage with the blades. In other words, it's possible to deal more than double damage when hitting a frosted enemy with the blades, so it's definitely worth taking advantage of. Just remember, Vaporized Frost only provides a boost to melee attacks, which are regular R1 and R2 hits, as well as anything in the melee branch of the skill tree. Of course, to do this, you first need some good ways to build up the Frost state. The Frost Awaken skill is the primary way of applying Frost. Hold Triangle to Frost the Axe, and then use any other Axe attack skill to apply frost buildup. One of the best skills for this is Frost Ascent, performed by doing an R2 heavy attack while the axe is frosted. Another great way to build up frost is by using the Glacial Rake skill repeatedly by holding R1. Keep in mind you can go straight into a Glacial Rake if you start holding R1 while another attack animation is finishing. And you can do a series of Glacial Rakes much faster by dodging between each one to cut the animation short. Glacial Rake also deals a good amount of damage and is a great way to build up your permafrost charge, which we'll talk about more in a minute. The Serpent Snare skill can also apply a lot of frost, plus it produces an explosion on impact that launches and applies frost to nearby enemies. To make using the Serpent Snare a little more fluid, tap R2 for a regular heavy attack first, and then hold R2 to do a second heavy attack that leads directly into the snare. Certain runics, like Wrath of the Frost Ancient, can also be used to apply frost. The second way to use frost is to instantly freeze smaller, weaker enemies with the freezing throw skills. By aiming with L2 and either tapping or holding R2, you can perform a heavy axe throw that not only instantly builds up the frosted state, but also freezes enemies in place. They'll stay frozen like this for 12 seconds, or until you recall the axe, making them easy targets or taking them out of the fight temporarily while you deal with another enemy. The other major element is fire, officially called burn and dealt with the blades of chaos. Building up the burn state causes enemies to take damage over time for 12 seconds. It's relatively easy to build up the burn state even on multiple enemies at once. Just like frost, your ruinic level influences how quickly you can build up burn, but it also affects how much damage is dealt by each each damage over time tick while an enemy is burning. This is one of the reasons it's smart to focus on increasing your runic stat. Now, one of the most effective ways to use burn is to combine it with damage from the axe. Just like we have vaporized frost for the blades, we have a parallel skill called extinguished flames for the axe. This one increases damage when using axe melee attacks on burning enemies. Just like vaporized frost, damage is increased by about 80 to 150% but the boost is much more pronounced here because axe attacks already deal more damage than the blades. So, you should definitely get in the habit of getting enemies burning with the blades and then switching to the axe to deal damage. Not only will your axe hit much harder, but the burn state will be dealing some damage over time. The best ways to build up burn are by using the flame whiplash mechanic by tapping triangle and then following up with either the scorched earth or scorched sweep skills. Scorched sweep in particular gets very powerful later on, so it's definitely worth investing in this branch of the skill tree. You can also build up burn and frost by using the immolation and permafrost skills respectively. 
By landing a series of hits without taking damage yourself, you'll fill the circular meter next to your health bar. When this meter is full, the axe and blades will deal frost and burn damage with every hit. Permafrost and immolation remain active until you take damage, or stop hitting enemies for 10 seconds. However, these aren't a great way to build up the frosted and burned state, since each hit deals a relatively small amount of elemental damage. However, you should still try to leverage permafrost and immolation because the extra elemental damage increases the overall damage you deal with each hit. They just aren't great for status buildup, unless your runic level is very high. By the way guys, if you enjoy these combat mechanic breakdown videos, a like would be much appreciated. That lets me know you want to see more content like this and really does help out the channel. The next status effect you'll unlock is Sonic, which is applied with Atreus's arrows. The Sonic state lasts 10 seconds and has a few effects. The primary one is that hitting an enemy afflicted with Sonic will cause concussive waves to radiate out and hit other enemies. These waves stagger them briefly and deal a bit of damage. With the Sonic Echoes and Sonic Resonance skills unlocked, the waves also apply a fair amount of stun and Sonic buildup to surrounding enemies. Sonic Echoes in particular is worth unlocking early because applying stun buildup to multiple enemies at once is really nice. The Sonic Aftershock accessory also allows you to build up stun on Sonic afflicted enemies a lot faster, so I definitely recommend equipping and upgrading that. Sonic also puts enemies in stasis if they're already airborne, which basically pegs them in the air for 3 seconds. This is pretty cool, but I don't find it particularly useful. You'd think it would be a good way to start juggling, but when the 3 seconds are up, the enemy starts falling no matter what, so I find it's better to just start juggling without applying Sonic. Up next, we have Stun. Stun isn't technically a status effect, but it works very similar to one. Every enemy has a gray stun bar directly under their health bar. When you fill it up all the way, you'll trigger an R3 stun grab, which is a powerful attack that deals a nice chunk of damage. It's also worth noting that you're totally invincible during the stun grab animation, and there's certain gear that allows you to heal by performing stun grabs. If you want to learn more about that, I'll have my early game build video linked below. The R3 icon that pops up for a stun grab lasts for 6 seconds, and can either be yellow or red. If it's yellow, you'll deal a bunch of damage, but you won't kill the enemy. If it's red, the stun grab will finish them. You can make a yellow stun grab turn red by continuing to deal damage while an enemy is down. Most attacks deal some stun along with their regular damage, but there are a few optimal methods. My favorite is to use the Dauntless Shield to perform parries. Parries with any shield build up a decent amount of stun, but the Dauntless Shield deals much more. Plus, its shield bash ability, performed with an L1 double tap, deals a bunch of additional stun. If you can master the parry playstyle with the Dauntless, you'll trigger stun grabs all the time. But if you don't like to parry, then the next best way to apply stun is by simply sheathing your weapons and using Kratos' fists and the shield to attack. If you want to learn more about parrying and other ways to apply stun, my combat tips video will be linked below. Hex is the next elemental effect you'll be able to leverage once you head to Vanaheim with Freya. Like Sonic, Hex is applied by your companion's arrows. Once built up, the Hex state lasts 20 seconds, and it can amplify and propagate other elements, including frost, burn, poison, and shock. If you build up one of these statuses first, and then build up the hex state, as soon as the hex icon is filled, an explosion will occur. The explosion deals a chunk of damage to the enemy targeted, as well as a smaller amount to nearby enemies. It also transfers some of the status buildup to those enemies. So, for example, if you have an enemy burning and then apply hex, the explosion will deal some burn damage to nearby enemies. You can also do this the other way around. Hex an enemy first, and then apply burn damage. In this case, you'll notice you can build up the burn state much faster because the hex is amplifying the element buildup. The same applies for Frost, Poison, and Shock. Hex is quite powerful, especially once you've upgraded the Hex skills and if you use accessories that complement Hex, like Sigil Punishment, which increases melee attack damage against Hexed enemies. In Vanaheim, you'll also gain access to your first method of using Poison, the Lunda Armor. When built up, the Poison state lasts 10 seconds and lowers the power level of an enemy by 1. Power levels mean a lot in God of War, so dropping an enemy's power level is huge. The difference between your power level and an enemy's determines how resistant the enemy is to your attacks. If you're a lower level than them, it will be very tough to deal damage. If you're a higher level, it will be significantly easier, even if your strength stat remains the same. It's very difficult to quantify the effect of power level differences because we aren't shown damage numbers or enemy stats. But the takeaway here is that lowering an enemy's power level with poison is a big deal. Poison is particularly useful when dealing with single enemy bosses before you have endgame gear. The best way to leverage it is basically by using the full Lunda set and barehanded attacks. I'll link my mid-game build video below if you want to dive deeper on how to use the Lunda armor and poison. Okay, to cover Bifrost, I need to talk about a major story spoiler. So if you haven't gone on your second trip to Svartalfheim for the Forging Destiny quest yet, you might want to leave now. Still here? 
Okay, so normally you're trying to avoid Bifrost. It's associated with the Anheryar and gets applied to your health bar as a purple overlay. It will progressively heal over 25 seconds, but if you're hit while it's still there, you'll take a bunch of damage. But there is a way to turn this around and use Bifrost on enemies. Outside of a few specialty pieces of gear, like the Glaive of Dodhar Relic, the only way to gain access to Bifrost is by using the Elemental Siphon skill on the drop near Spear. By holding R2 near an enemy like an Anheryar, you can charge your current Spear with Bifrost and use it to apply Bifrost damage. Then follow up with an attack from another weapon to trigger damage from the Bifrost. There's a few catches to this though. First, continuing to deal damage with the Bifrost Spear won't trigger the explosion. It just keeps adding more Bifrost, so you have to deal damage some other way to trigger it. Any amount of damage will work, so the easiest way I've found is to simply do a shield strike or parry an attack so you don't have to switch to another weapon. It can be tough to trigger the Bifrost explosion though because the status only lasts for 10 seconds on enemies. And finally, if you throw your Bifrost Spear, your next spear will be normal, so you'll have to siphon Bifrost again if you want to keep using it. That being said, sticking an enemy with a Bifrost Spear and then detonating it by tapping Triangle can deal a large amount of status buildup, depending on the enemy's resistance to it. In fact, this is a good way to apply other elemental statuses too, like Poison, Burn, Frost, and Shock, and even Light Siphon from Elves. Don't bother holding Triangle as it won't provide any more elemental buildup than a tap. Finally, we have Shock, and again, you can use Spear Siphoning to gain access to this element. Shock is pretty simple. It locks an enemy in place for 6 seconds, making it easier to deal damage or apply another element. In addition to Spear Siphoning, you can use the Hilt of Riddle Relic, which produces a wave of shock, or Freya's Invoke the Storm Ruinic Summon to apply shock. Alright guys, those are all my tips for elemental damage and status effects in God of War Ragnarok. I hope this breakdown helps you take your gameplay up a notch. If you enjoyed the video, or if you learned something new, leaving a like would be much appreciated. And if you have any tips to share on elements and status effects, definitely leave a comment below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.